It has been a hot minute for me. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. Uh, if you're watching this in the playlist, uh, <laughs> uh, no time has passed, but uh, I, this is actually about a month since the last episode that I played. Uh, it was October, so I backed off this and played some horror games, and it's November now, so I'm back and i have no idea what's going on so uh, i did skim over my uh last video here so i know that we're here to talk to people oh there's heinrich okay cool we're gonna start with adira here i know we had to talk to a bunch of people we finally got back to the ship oh there's jay right there too on pascal okay i didn't know everybody was uh on this side now it seems no there's just a ton of people uh well in that case then we're not gonna start with the deer we're gonna start with pascal whoever's furthest away here yeah there's nobody back here so let's go also um since my last video they've had a ton of updates released an entire dlc which i did turn on so we'll probably be seeing a little bit of that maybe hopefully don't know uh don't I have no idea what it's about, so we'll find out. Uh, someone in the comments will scream at me saying, this is DLC, you idiot. So anyway, let's talk to Pascal here. Beyond the sire knows all, comprehends all. Awesome. Okay. Uh, I want to know the truth about you. I want to know more about your past. Tell me about the Adeptus Mechanicus. I no longer require your services. Leave. I must take my leave. Okay, let's actually ask about him, shall we? The request is approved. Oh! I did conceal certain information. I was a student of Archmagus Amanat, but I committed an act of betrayal after he deviated from sacred dogma. An act of betrayal now? What did he do? He fell into schism and challenged the sacred boundaries of knowledge. The Blessed Ammonite claimed the limits of what is permitted must be expanded, because by refusing to explore certain law, we find ourselves in contempt of the Seventh Universal Law. Comprehension is the key to all things. That sounds pretty valid, in my opinion. The sacred commandments observed by all followers of the cult Mechanicus. Okay, I didn't know that was a thing. But yeah, I mean, uh, studying heresy in order to combat it sounds pretty, uh, pretty good idea. My mentor put forth a thesis claiming that we have stagnated, that ritual is now nothing but a cage for souls and false worship of the Omnissiah. He sought to break the cycle of mindless repetition because he saw the inevitable demise of our faith and all humanity at the end of it. That does sound... <laughs> okay, I was gonna say something. Uh, uh, yeah, fuck it, I'll say it. That does sound like pretty much every modern religion nowadays, <laughs> honestly. Um, yeah. Good for him. Although he's probably absolutely dead. Pascal probably absolutely murdered him. Uh, certain aspects of the Imperium have indeed ossified. Never heard that word before. Uh... His argument sounds reasonable. Uh, this aramant of yours is a dyed, is a dyed in a wool, in the wool heretic. What the fuck does that mean? Dyed in the wool? I don't know. Uh, that seems like theological argument, not a political one. Oh, that's interesting. Fascinating. I'm going to say his argument sounds reasonable, honestly. This statement is false. My mentor's words sound like heresy. Limits were established because it is dangerous to venture beyond. 
Each step past them could lead to a bloody slaughter, but the blessed Ammonat was not afraid. And how did you betray him? The teachings of the blessed Ammonat spread, and word of it reached the conclave of the Cognizant fleet. They recognized his teachings as tech heresy. Many tech priests suddenly vanished or were subjected to server penance for minor transgressions. The students of Ammonat, whose number included many enlightened and respected brothers, resisted. My prognosis showed that our most likely future was a schism and a fratricidal war that would destroy the Cognizant's fleet. That was when I headed to the Conclave. Okay. So he freaking... He didn't want a civil war, so he just killed him? <laughs> I confess that handed the information about my mentor's research over to the Conclave. Brazen anathematic studies of the Forbidden Law. The Conclave could use that data to summon Archmagos Ammonat to stand trial and compel him to repent on pain of excommunicate Traitoris. His subsequent fate is unknown to me. Okay, so maybe he's not dead. Maybe we can run into him and be like, hey, <laughs> here's your boy. <laughs> you, uh, you want any, uh, you want any better than that uh, revenge there? And we might have to fight him. Who knows? Uh, yeah, so that sucks. He just straight up tattled on him. The little bitch. I've lost <laughs> some respect for Pascal. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I was able to trust you now, traitor. Ooh, you acted as a loyal son of the Imperial should. That was rather callous of you. I guess you really don't have a heart of metal. Do have a heart of metal. Mmm. Damn, there's only one, like, good answer here. I don't want to do this one. Because that might uh, piss him off. But I will tell him he had a metal heart. This statement is true. However, I took this step out of loyalty to my mentor. He rejected caution and was leading us to a blasphemous war where he would become the first and most important victim. I did not want to witness his destruction and tried to force him to submit. Mmm. Damn. Didn't want him becoming a martyr. I wanted to return to my mentor and share his fate. But the Conclave found me repentant and sent me to the station Alter Templum Calixis EXT-17, where I was to atone for my previous transgressions. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Fucking... Christ, dude. These options. You're as good as finding excuses as you are technology. Oh, man. Or traitor, or... Fuck, dude. Yikes, bro. I guess we're going with the excuses line here. Though he did do a good job, I guess. I mean, te technically, you know, whistleblowers are there for a reason. Fuck it, let's just play into it. I pray that the Omnissiah grants us wisdom to overcome the dialectic differences that divide us. Okay. So how did you go to Rikid Minoris? I was summoned there by a message that was encrypted with the Blessed Ammonat's personal code, and could it be interpreted in several ways. One thing was certain. We were in danger, and I had to go to Rikad Minoris. Okay. The Trek priest named Abel, who is he? Is that the... Is that the one that they told us... Eh, fuck it. Let's just ask. <laughs> Assessing his personality is difficult. 
The spirit of Brother Abel is different from that of most people. Tech comrades of the COG call such persons quiet ones. He possesses significant intellect, but shuns communication. Just like me. <laughs> He's me for real. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, <laughs> outside of YouTube, I guess. Maybe. Hopefully. So far, I not have not hopefully. been able to understand. determine why Abel summoned me to Rykab Minoris. How he is related to the blessed Ammonat, or why he bears the same name as me. Perhaps Reverend Abel may not be fully able to actualize and interpret the available data. That's a whole weird fucking statement right there. What do you mean he had the same name as you? That's weird. What are you going to do next? I was wrong when I assumed it was the blessed Archmagos Amanat who assumed the guise of Abel Hanaman. But there is a connection between him and the Reverend Abel, and I intend to uncover the nature of this link. Hanaman, that's... God, wasn't that the, the... the priest that we talked to, maybe? I don't remember. I don't recall. I have no more questions. I will return to ruminating on the search for the Blessed Ammonat. Oh, you're searching for him, like, actively. Oh. To apologize, perhaps, maybe? Uh, let's click this again. The request is approved. I have no outright restrictions on disclosing this information. Oh, there are new questions here. Where are you from? Information about my origins is worthless. <laughs> okay. I belong to the priesthood of explorators and came to the Corona's expanse over 200 years ago. Any events preceding that moment are insignificant. Okay, dude. I'm just trying to make small talk. But also, did you say you're over 200 years old? <laughs> Hold on. The <laughs> uh, fuck? What do you mean by that? How'd you end up here? I was honored to become a member of the Explorator Cognizance Fleet. When the Adeptus Mechanicus summoned the Faithful for an exploratory venture into the depths of the Coronas Expanse, I joined the fleet in fulfillment of my sacred vows of comprehension. So you joined just because you wanted to explore and find out? fuck around and find out uh why are you not with the fleet then after i betrayed archmagus amanat the fleet conclave directed me to the orbital station alto templum yes, Calixus, we know that. ext 17 for penance also i would like to point out that it's very specific that he deems that he betrayed amarant abernat amarnat I fucking already forgot the arch Magos. I already forgotten how to pronounce his name, but he specifically says I betrayed him, not the other way around to where he betrayed us all. So I turned him in. It was like, no, I turned him in. Therefore, I betrayed him. Very interesting dilemma to have. Sir. This venerable temple station was founded in the early years of our expansion into the Coronas Expanse. It is currently a rear observation post of the Cognizance fleet in orbit around the star Fury Bundus. Can you say that again, dude? <laughs> I fucking love the way he's Fury Bundus. Fury Bundus. Fury Bundus Big Chungus. Uh, who are the Explorators? The sacred fraternity of Explorers. The Cult Mechanicus sends us out to the frontiers of the known sectors as researchers and conquerors. We are the warriors of the Code, who return to the Lost Worlds and devote themselves to recovering the lost ancient knowledge. So they're the Brotherhood of Steel. 
Uh, yeah, cool. Are, uh, so is he a part of a different faction? Like the explorers, is that a different faction altogether than the cult mechanicus? Because it seems like they send out the explorers to do this shit. Maybe it's like a rank or something? I don't know. Explorators are granted the privilege of being more independent than many of our tech comrades. However, it has earned us a reputation as unstable and poorly controlled troublemakers whose unorthodox views are dangerously close to apostasy. Oh, okay, cool. I wish I could meet more of you fuckers. Uh, tell me about your Mechorandite. Is that how you say it? Mechadinde writes? I don't know. They are my younger brothers and guides on the way to the Omnissiah. Their machine spirits are directly bound to my neocortex and pick up impulses from my subconscious. Sometimes they act ahead of my thoughts. This is how the Omnissiah leads me to comprehension. He's literally Doc Ock from Spider-Man 2. Okay. Cool. We can stop there. Acknowledged. Tell me more about the Adeptus Mechanicus. I am honored to belong to the priesthood of Mars, guided by its tenets. We safeguard technology against the impure and the unenlightened. Technology organization that uh known as the priesthood of Mars, which mandates, constructs, and honors the sacred technologies of humanity. So they are the Brotherhood of Steel. They're kind of like from the impure and the unenlightened. Unenlightened, just keeping tech out of stupid people's hands. I guess that's like noble in some way. <laughs> uh, why did you mention Mars? That is where the cult of the Omnissiah originated and where we were granted the first revelations. Many millennia ago, we made an alliance with the Emperor of Terra and have served the Imperium ever since, paying a tribute to machinery, weapons, and void ships. Yeah, so that's something I actually knew about beforehand, is that uh, basically all these, like when humanity started to expand and they expanded to Mars, Mars kind of just like, cut ties with earth 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 and um kind of like had their own society you know separate from uh terra whatever you want to fucking call it and then and then the emperor kind of like got them back under control and uh here they are very cool stuff but they are kind of a separate entity as a whole everything that bears the blessed seal of machinery comes from our hands and it is we who make sure the operating rituals are performed as they were meant to we are everywhere we are the mars forged steel bars that give the imperium strength what do you mean by guarding it it's not buried treasure it's not a secret Ooh, yeah, I would assume I, I, I like it's so complicated. I'm assuming it is technically like not really a secret, but like something beyond comprehension. You know, let's try it. It is both a treasure and a secret. Technology is how the divinity of the Omnissiah manifests itself in this world. This is why the uninitiated may only be allowed to touch the most vulgar and mundane of its instances. We, on the other hand, are authorized to use the sacred catechism of maintenance and operation. So you call IT. No, I'm just kidding. They are IT. Um, so frickin... What was I going to say? I, I had something funny. Fuck. God damn it. <laughs> Although there is another reason to deny lay people the sacrament of knowledge, it can be dangerous. 
twisted by renegades. The Omnissiah's wisdom is called Heretech, and the exposure to it may corrupt the uninitiated. Another danger is knowledge strangely interpreted and inscrutably twisted by the minds of the Xenos. This vein is called Xenotech. That's hilarious, Heretech. Forbidden heretical technology spawned by the warp and chaos. That's a very funny play on words. Also, I, I fucking remember what I was going to say, but they, you see how they're like swinging sensors and shit to like, they're praying to the machines that they work. <laughs> I feel that, you know, I used to do uh, some coding here and every time you fucking do any coding, it's like you just pray. And, you know, I get that. And I think I'm going to be praying to the Omnissiah from now on. <laughs> Sacred objects should be touched only by worthy hands. Banning things you cannot understand is the opposite of seeking knowledge. Technology is merely a tool that can be employed without risk of a wise wielder. Without risk by a wise wielder. Admitted the Adeptus Mechanicus do not wish to share their secrets because they are afraid someone might surpass them. It is simple as that. I see. Xenotech. Heretech. So very dangerous. We're going to say that it's the opposite of seeking knowledge because it kind of is, you know? That is a bold hypothesis. And yet the Omnissiah teaches us that a dauntless mind can penetrate any knowledge through analysis, where the ignorant see heresy, the enlightened might see truth. So, do you agree? <laughs> or, <laughs> I don't, I can't comprehend that sentence you just said. Uh, do you hold a high position in your fraternity? He's a frat bro. This selectu indicates that I am a Magos, who has mastered the sacraments of many spheres of knowledge, and has the right to conduct services in a forged cathedral. High-ranking member of the Adeptus Mechanicus and devoted disciple of the Omnissiah. A bishop, if you would, pretty much. Uh, let me see. Pascal exposes his wrist, the glowing green threads of an electric tattoo run under his pale skin and has long forgotten the taste of sunlight. Okay. Elect two. That's funny. Oh, he is a major Magos. Oh, I didn't realize. I'm, I'm an idiot. I wasn't even listening to him, apparently. So he, he is skilled in several things which i mean thank god because we need that out there you know what is the omnisaya in your understanding Ooh, he is the divine mechanism the maker of technology the universe was made to resemble a mechanical marvel because the omnisaya rules over it Knowledge is the highest form that he uses to manifest in the world, for now. Someday, he will come to this world in the absolute fullness of his splendor. Okay, so first of all, it's a guy. <laughs> Very sexist of you. Just kidding. Um, so they believe he'll come back one day, or, or he'll come to this world? Second coming? <gasps> the Adeptus Mechanicus worshipped the Emperor. He is the earthly manifestation of the Omnissiah, who brought humanity into the light of divine grace. Okay, so they believe that the Emperor is the Omnissiah. His he's like a, a manifestation of the Omnissiah. Okay. So he's like a corporeal, like, physical body. Uh, what is behind the Adeptus Mechanicus enthusiasm for replacing flesh with augmentations? Organic tissue is an imperfect replica of the machine. Transient and vulnerable. Metal is more stable, more effective, and more durable. 
Fresh speak is flowed next to binaric language. Meat begets weakness. It softens the mind and undermines discipline. But you can replace metal when it wears down. In addition, a machine is a supreme form of knowledge. And by assuming mechanical form, we become closer to the Omnissiah. Yeah, that makes sense, honestly. That's pretty much every cyberpunk universe <laughs> uh, argument there. However, like all things sacred, our augmentations must not be defiled by the eyes of the ignorant. Which is why we reveal only the crudest of tools while holy mechanisms remain concealed beneath our crimson robes. Interesting. So you're hiding all the cool shit is what you're telling me. Can't call it electric cybernetic uh, substitute for biological limb or organ. That's fine. I'm curious to see your augments. Oh, is that uh, is that coming on to him a little? <laughs> I feel like that's a little flirty. <laughs> uh, this is abominable disfigurement of the sacred human shape. An interesting superstition. I'm going to do it. I'm going to come on to him. The right to witness the miracle of flesh being fused with holy metal is granted only to those who have ascended to the rank of initiate. However, your lofty status of rogue trader allows me to make a partial exception and reveal my sacred stigmata. Oh shit, guys, he's gonna show us his penis. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, here we go. Pascal <laughs> reverently parts the robes scarlet folds on his chest you see emaciated white meat gnawed through by mechanic mechanical shunts and flexible wires blood runs through the transparent pipes enriched with the nutrients required by the pallid flesh yo that's sick actually use tech succeed okay tech use sorry uh, the side of the body transformed into an appendage of, uh, to an incredibly complex machine built using unfathomably ancient blueprints is mesmerizing. Every component of this machine serves a dual purpose of preserving life in Pascal's fragile flesh and preventing all threats to his well-being. Nice. Say nothing. <laughs> The Omnisaya has been generous to you. His creation is keeping you safe from death. <laughs> you are right to hide your disfigurement from everyone else. Uh, how could you maim yourself in such a gruesome manner? Or say nothing. No, we're going to tell him that's sick, bro. The Omnisaya has been generous to you too. He has granted you understanding. That makes sense. Uh, Pascal looks at you with respect. He seems surprised that you recognize the purpose of the augmentation implanted into his body. Very cool. You have a strange way of speaking. Is that because of the augmentation or does your fate dictate how you should express yourself? Interesting question, dude. Partially true. I had a voice modulator implanted alongside the respiratory purification module, but there is an additional reason. Gothic is not my first language. I am used to thinking and making statements in lingua technis. The binaric language is more informative, more ergonomic, and less prone to misinterpretation. Interesting. By Herrick. Bein Herrick? Okay. Can't Mechanicus! <laughs> uh, a collection of dialects used by the Adeptus Mechanicus and its tech priests can be used as a spoken language with audio bursts or as a machine code with electrical signals. So it's basically like speaking in Morse code, which is cool. But also, okay, I wanna point out this alongside my respiratory purification module. So why the fuck in that fart gas was he taking damage from the poison? if he had a fucking purification module. 
Whatever, dude. Acknowledged. Uh, yeah, I must take my leave. May your labors be effective and fruitful. In dialogue. Excellent. Well, thank you, Pascal, for all the lore about the tech priests. Uh, let's see here. I do have... Oh, look at this. It shows me where everyone is. Oh, I had no idea. Oh, thank God, actually. Is that everyone? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five. Oh, so hold on. Okay, so it's. Oh, this is only. Is this only my part? Oh, I'm an idiot. Thank you very much. Good to know. That I can scroll. And I can use the scroll wheel. Okay, let's actually level up Adira real quick here. She's a level 17. What is everybody else at? Level 18. So she only has one level to, to fuck with here. Uh, gruesome kill? What is this now? Hold on. She has a talent. Uh, when prey is killed, all enemies within a 10 cell radius uh, around the prey have their agility reduced. For two rounds very cool withdraw whenever the bounty hunter is attacked with melee range the first time since the end of their turn they automatically dodge that attack and move one cell in the opposite direction from the enemy the bounty hunter does not provoke attack of opportunities with this movement i think that's really good because of her being a ranged person Whenever an ally kills prey, the bounty hunter gains half of the bonuses granted by Hunt the Prey. Eh. Whenever the bounty hunter scores a critical hit, the target armor is reduced. Uh, whenever they get a critical hit. Uh, oh, by them or their ally. The bounty hunter gains percentage damage for two rounds. Oh, whenever they're killed by a critical hit. That's interesting. That'd be cool. Whenever the bounty hunter scores a critical hit, they gain 6% armor penetration until the end of combat. I think I will take this withdrawal. Okay, and that was actually it. Not a long level up here. I'm glad we could uh, talk to so much to Pascal uh, for the next like 18 episodes or whatever. It's probably just gonna be us talking to each one of these dudes if it takes that long every time. Uh, but Jay's next on the list, but I'm going to call it there for now. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, d don't, uh, <laughs> don't, uh, expect me to not play this for a while because I am definitely back in. I am looking forward to playing this. I am in love with this game and I'm interested with the new DLC stuff. It said it added like 15 hours of stuff and that it's integrated and weaved into the main story. So hopefully we didn't miss anything yet. I think that's okay, because we're still pretty early game, even though we're like, you know, almost 40 episodes in. We're still considered pretty early game. And I think that is just because we're only in the second uh, solar system or whatever you want to call it, you know, on the star system. Which seems crazy to think about that we were only too deep and we fucking we played the shit out of this, dude. All right. Well, that's enough rambling. Uh, Wilbur will be waiting to talk to Jay in the next one and I'll see you in the next one.